Welcome back, everyone, and happy Monday evening. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, weather for weather geeks. Pretty nice day today, actually a little bit better than we expected, with temperatures spiking into the mid-60s this afternoon, and the day started with a fantastic sunrise. Thanks to everyone who sent us pictures of this sunrise this morning. We had just the right amount of high cloudiness still overhead at the start of the day that made for a very colorful sunrise. After a good deal of sunshine, the clouds rolled in late in the afternoon. We even had a couple of renegade showers late in the afternoon in our northern viewing area. But yeah, temperatures today peaked at 65, our warmest day since the 28th of October, just before the cool snap. Uh, that began just before Halloween. Of course, last week largely chilly, but now we've had four consecutive warmer than average days. That streak may come to an end tomorrow with a much more seasonable day expected for our Tuesday. Other regional high temperatures today, 66 Pittsburgh, 63 in Erie, and 62 in Akron. Did 66 up at Hopkins Airport in Cleveland. On the weather map this evening, uh, this renegade batch of showers just clipped parts of Mercer County, especially late in the afternoon. There's actually a decent amount of lightning and thunder for a time. Up near the uh, Pennsylvania-New York border, up towards Buffalo and the Finger Lakes as well. There's a trailing band of showers back here. This is actually a cold front that's slowly sinking south. It's a pretty weak front, but this is the front that's going to usher in the more seasonable air mass for our Tuesday. In its wake, a little bit of a northwesterly flow, and in the cold weather season, you know what that means? Well, clouds. I do think that there can be a little bit of sunshine from time to time on Tuesday, especially in our southern viewing area. Overall, though, especially in our northern areas, clouds will win the day, and that'll keep a lid on our temperatures. All right, a couple of systems or a couple of features heading our way. The first one, a warm front on Wednesday. Be a big temperature gradient across the state on Wednesday. We'll be on the cool side in the 40s and 50s in the far northeastern part of Ohio and up into the 70s now towards Cincinnati. Um, we're not going to get into the 70s around here, but we'll be kind of in between those chilly and warm air masses on Wednesday. Might be a shower or two in the afternoon with that warm front and then a somewhat better chance of rain in between the warm front and the approaching cold front Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This front on Thursday morning, the timing of it such that this could be kind of a backwards day on Thursday as uh, temperatures start the day probably in the lower and middle 50s, retreat for a time into the lower 40s before the midday hours through are through and then maybe bob up a few more degrees back into the 50s. But overall, not a great day coming up on Thursday, even though rain chances will be pretty much restricted to the morning. All right, let's talk about, you know, kind of bigger picture items here. Uh, this is a model depiction of rain for the next week or so. Pretty modest amounts around our part of the country. You'll notice some brighter colors off to our south. For our neighbors off to the south, this is actually a good thing. There's been a pretty severe drought late in the summer and early in the fall down in parts of the southern U.S., including parts of the Tennessee Valley, down into Georgia, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, places like that. They really need the rain down here. And as we roll forward in time here, we're going to start to see more and more, I think, of an El Nino influence in the weather pattern across North America. And what I mean by that is that typically in an El Nino situation, you get a more active what's called su a subtropical jet stream. This is the northern branch of the jet up here. Down here is a stronger branch of the jet when we have an El Nino the subtropical jet. It tends to be a big player as we go into the winter in El Nino situations. It tends to be a lot weaker in La Nina, the opposite of El Nino. But this more pronounced subtropical jet should start gearing, or uh, guiding, I should say, more and more moisture and storms into those rain-starved areas of the south. And I do think it will spell more active times for us eventually as well. And this is today's 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. A different looking map. In the short and medium term, it's pretty darn dry in a lot of the eastern U.S., I think, through early next week. But beyond that, we're going to see more and more systems traversing the country and providing some uh, rainfall. With that, though, will come a mild period. Lots of red and orange on our 8 to 14 day outlook today. This is uh, kind of the week prior to Thanksgiving. Might see some cooler trends as we get closer to Thanksgiving itself, but from about the 14th through the 20th, this looks like a pretty balmy pattern for us locally. You know, we're not going to see a lot of hard freezes. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, daytime temperatures, you know, above average, which by that point, that'd be in the middle and upper 50s, to at least in at least that warm, maybe even 60s for some time. So the middle of the month is looking pretty mild. Will that trend, of course, continue into winter? That's the big question. And as you know by now, if you've been watching Weather Geeks of late, our annual winter forecast is coming up Thursday evening. You can watch it in the same place you're watching Weather for Weather Geeks right now. The short version, the TV version, if you will, the three-minute version. We'll get that online in the evening, and you can watch that, of course, live on our newscasts Thursday evening. Of course, the trends in recent winters have been warm. 
Uh, 17 into 18, that was a pretty typical winter temperature-wise. Um, but ever since a very strong El Nino in 15 and 16, for the most part, we've had pretty lame winters. <laughs> and taking the cake was last winter, 22-23, um, which was exceptionally warm and snow-free. We're going to tell you how this winter is going to shape up, not only compared to last winter, but recent winters, recent El Nino winters. What else is going into this winter forecast other than El Nino? And there is quite a bit. There's quite a bit about this specific El Nino that is kind of unique. Um, the forecast at this point is pretty much final. I might make a couple of final tweaks this week, but uh, since the first of the month, uh, we got some new model information, some computer models. We got some data from the oceans. How warm are the oceans uh, at the start of November? Uh, did the numbers change with the strength of El Nino? We got a lot of that information over the last few days and allowed me to kind of put the final touches on that forecast. So it is just about ready to go, and we're going to talk all about it on Thursday evening. We're hoping for a more successful forecast than last year, which went a little bit sideways for a myriad of reasons, one of which is pretty complicated. And uh, If you uh, want to read about the winter forecast and even a review of last winter, we're going to post a blog version of the winter forecast online again Thursday evening, and you can check that out in addition to the video. So look forward to seeing you then. I'll see you back here on Tuesday evening for the Tuesday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.